Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Feels like ages since I've done one of these videos, uh, mostly because it is. I've been a mix of away, busy and a bit lazy. But you join me here in the Ogwen Valley. Absolutely beautiful spot. Kind of the first introduction to mountains for me. It's cracking, isn't it? I've parked just down there, little blue van hidden. I've walked along the road, da -da 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 -da, up the wall and cut across here. So it's taken me less than 15 minutes to get up here to this scramble, which is you know the clickbaity title of this video, something along the lines of, is this the best quick hit uh, scramble in North Wales? Uh, I reckon it could be up there, but I'll get on it um, and have a chat through various bits and pieces when I'm doing it. You'll notice I'm wearing this very fetching purple jacket from Quartazoo. Excuse this fuel stain, I think, um, but it shows I have been wearing it and testing it. I think I've worn it for about 12 days now out and about, mix of things. So I'll get on the route, talk through why I think it's a really good scramble, show you the way, show you through a few sites and things like that, and I'll stop on a ledge halfway through or something, chat about the jacket. All the while, the boy will just be wagging his tail, watching the world go by. Not a bad life for a little dog, is it? Excuse the sound quality of the GoPro for some of this lot makes life a bit easier than lugging the big camera around in my hand. Um, first, which is really good, and it brings you out under this thing, which is known as the pulpit. Uh, the last couple of meters I've done the art on camera, just a bit of easy walking almost. And from here, the next bit goes off through these bits, and there's like a little flake there. That's kind of a key waypoint. So you just walk up this next bit, which I'll do while chatting to the camera, um, carefully, of course, but it's really is just walking with a bit of hands. Um, and then the next, next bit actually feels quite exposed. So if you're with a rope, it feels quite nice to have the rope on at that point. Talk about that in a minute, but you can build a belay here for the first bit and there's loads of intermediate belays as well. And then you're off over that bit. So I'll run across that bit and uh, probably have a chat to the camera after that about the jacket. Oh, well, there you go. Sadly, it's all over already. Milestone Approach is a lovely scramble. I really do like it. I, I can't think of many 
scrambles that you can get onto so quickly as this one in terms of walking from the road. That one I did a video on down there um, previously. Uh, that That's comparable. Actually, even that's a fraction longer. This is a super short approach. Most stuff in North Wales is relatively short. Even our long walking seem pretty short compared to like being in Scotland and stuff. But this is, you know, at the, at the short end of the spectrum for sure. The rock is really nice. I, I enjoy the scramble. It's got some real quite climby bits. And for the type of scramble it is, a couple of exposed bits as well, which is cool. I was obviously not using a rope. I did think twice about coming with a friend to do it on a rope. I've done it loads of times, roped and unroped. The reason I thought about ropes was just for the, like, the example setting, really. Um, but, you know, I am confident doing it. It was dry today. If it was wet, I probably wouldn't have come and done this video on my own. Um, I've done it in the wet, but roped up. I'm not sure if I've done it in the in the wet, unroped. It does make, you know, I'm a, we can all slip off anything, basically. And a slip would be bad off a lot of parts of that. I wore a helmet because I kind of thought, why not? It's the uh, Black Diamond Vapor that I did a video on recently, lightest one out there. So it's like that why not question really, isn't it? The boots, as you might notice, the good old faithful TX4s, absolutely not waterproof anymore, but it's, it's pretty dry today. Uh, no bogs to walk through on the way here. So they were my boot of choice. The Scarpa Mescalitos that I've been wearing lately, really good as well i'd say they're perhaps a bit more walking focused whereas these are a bit more scrambly sort of focused and that's my take on it anyway um both really good boots though if you're going to do it roped up which is a fundamentally a very good idea uh, i'd bring like medium to large stuff you know, in terms of nuts hexes cams that kind of thing and probably a 30 meter rope i wouldn't want to uh, lug around any more than that necessarily unless i was planning to abseil off because uh, there are a couple of points you can ab off but you'll need a longer rope than a 30 to do that um, but super nice well worth seeking out if you're you know you've driven up and you've only got a few hours of an evening uh, on your weekend trip or you know the other way around the end of a trip or just you fancy a couple of hours out and about it probably took me about half an hour obviously i know the route and i wasn't roped up and that was climbing up and down to leave the camera and fetch the camera and all that kind of stuff probably quick enough that the boy hasn't even really noticed i'm gone i don't expect um the options after here you can continue on to the north ridge lovely uh rest of the day out if you want to make it longer you can go on to another great bit of uh crag um, that's known the route's known as milestone continuation this lovely crack really good rock on it um does feel i'd like a rope on that more than this bit actually perhaps it's because i haven't done it as many times but you know um options of course i've soloed it as well as roped it uh or you can continue around to the west face or any combo of those kind of things over to the east face as well trivan is just a, a great mountain to be on i love it and what a great place to be the jacket though the quarter zoo all weather jacket 305 pounds sounds like a lot of money because i'm used to you know, I've been doing this stuff a long time, so £305 was like top-end jacket once upon a time. I'm going to refer to the jacket I've been wearing, paid for out of my own money, um, that I was using until getting this one to test, which was the Patagonia Dual Aspect. Really nice jacket. £450. Patagonia stuff is always expensive. That's a good chunk more. And I had a quick look around um, on other sites, Rab Mountain Equipment and stuff, and actually £305, you know, it's not unreasonable for a jacket i'm not saying it's cheap it really isn't is it there's other brands out there that do cheaper end of stuff but it does feel like a good jacket i've been happy wearing it and i'll sort of talk through in a second why but yeah of course it's a lot of money there is a code in the description below for some money off i think it's 10 percent i've i've got um yeah they gave me this jacket for free but i've got no affiliation to the company so i'll just say it how it is i, I'm a, I can do a good review a bad review or whatever hard to buy bad kit these days though i'll be honest Right, the jacket. I'm going to check the name of the waterproof material because I can't remember it. It's a Japanese brand, uh, uh, but it's called Dermizax EV3 layer. I had a couple of messages via Instagram, actually, of people who have used uh, that material on other jackets, and they've been impressed. The single most important thing about a waterproof jacket is that it's waterproof, isn't it? And I've been impressed with the waterproofness. I've worn this for about 12 days, mix of climbing stuff and mountain leader stuff where we're walking, a little bit of easy scrambling. So I, I feel like I'm in a place to give a decent opinion about it. But one thing, I have not got wet in it. I'm not a fan, really, of these kind of waterproof zips. 
they fail eventually. I'd just rather some big storm flaps on more of a walking type jacket, which I think this is really. But the actual material has been great, all right? It's relatively soft. It's a little bit stretchy. It's not like proper stretchy, but it's a little bit stretchy. Whilst it's soft, it feels quite a, kind of hard wearing. When I say soft, I mean not like those crisp packet Gore-Tex jackets that um, we all used to wear. So it's a bit nice. It's still a bit rustly, but it is what it is. Um, the website says it weighs about 450 grams. I can't remember the exact figure. I actually weighed it this morning on my scales uh, and it's 550. And that feels about right, actually, because it was heavier than the dual aspect one. Um, so I think that's about right. The other bit goes hand in hand with waterproofness is how breathable it is it's not raining today as you can see or at least it isn't at the moment it has been quite warm bit of a breeze coming up there i was just wearing like uh, my little outside jumper with this on the top so i was definitely sweating a bit i was warm but it felt like it was breathing when i'm touching the inside it's not really damp on the inside that i can notice the other day though last week uh, the boy jumped in a stream and couldn't get out so i had to jump in after him like properly jump in stream was flowing a bit and I went in properly deep grabbed him so deep that the water was going over the top of my done up jacket I got wet of course I got wet the water was coming in the top I was wet to my boxes and socks and t-shirt and everything but what I did when I jumped out the boy was fine he couldn't care less he went back to running around as normal I took off my like mid layer thing which is a Patagonia micro puff put a fresh one on but my t-shirt and sort of fleece are one thing was still on and still soaking wet it was horrible weather that day it was really raining a lot and actually a couple of hours later I kind of undid my top and uh, just to see what was going on underneath and I had started to dry out actually so the t-shirt and the fleece had started to dry out so the stuff was wicking and, and getting breathed out by the jacket and like I say it was a horrible day so I was quite impressed with that they quote figures on the website, 20,000 millimetres hydrostatic, hydrostatic head, easy for me to say. Uh, and they quote a figure that I forget for the breathability, but I'm not really up on breathability, so I didn't know if that was a good figure or a bad figure. Uh, it was kind of meaningless to me, but it feels like it's, it's been quite breathable. So that's good. It is waterproof. That's the main thing, like I say. Features on it. Start from here. Cuffs. Yeah. Velcro, they feel like good Velcro. It sounds a bit silly, but some Velcro is rubbish. Um, maybe it's own brand stuff, but and it just doesn't last. This feels like it's going to last. They are elasticated. I don't really like elasticated cuffs, rather just got rid of that, but that's just me. The arms themselves, though, you can see as I'm sat here, fine, long enough. I am six foot three and about 75, uh, 76 kilos. Fits me nicely in the body. Fits me nicely in the arms until I'm like climbing I do find they slip down a bit and they're not quite long enough when I'm, I'm doing stuff. I'd rather they were another inch or two longer, whatever that is in centimetres, two and a half, five centimetres longer. Uh, yeah, the body though is a good length. I've been happy with that. Even when wearing a harness, it hasn't kind of ridden up loads like jackets often do. But these things are the problem for climbing type stuff. They're a reasonable size, fine for a hand warmer kind of thing. Um, but... They're too low down to wear with the harness. The waist belt covers them up. So that kind of is a negative. The top pocket, the chest pocket, it's like a foam pocket only. You know, in the UK, we use OS maps a lot uh, when we're out in the hills and it definitely won't take a map unless you've got like a cut down section of one, but it won't take an OS map nowhere near doing that. Does that matter? Well, if you're walking and you know doing scrambling non rope then of course, no, it doesn't because uh, you're not going to be obstructed. If you're climbing, though, I was trying to think, do I use the pockets a lot when I'm climbing? A lot, maybe not, but I do use them, whether it's a hand warmer on a cold day to shove them in or for you know whatever else you, you're putting, like shoving a sling in off a belay or something. The pockets are not usable with a harness on. You do, though, get this Gucci little thing to clean your sunglasses or your goggles because it is sold as a ski jacket as well it's got a little clip and it clips into your pocket um i don't really like faffy stuff like that on a on a jacket or anything so i, I took that out straight away and have just um, left it lying around but i brought it out to remind myself to mention it um the hood the hood fits fine over um you know your head do it up it's not like a high hood i do like a high hood uh, for when the weather is really bad you can properly wrap up against the elements but it's not bad it, it covers the face quite well some especially american ones are quite open because they expect you to wear goggles with them but it covers up quite well it's adjustable 
again, from the climbing point of view, just chucking a helmet on, excuse me, going over the top of my hat, but it, it sits quite low and it is a low profile helmet. I'm not doing it up. The hood fits over. Undo it a bit. You can see it's okay. It's not a bad hood. When it's up, it does feel a little bit tight when it's fully zipped up. But it, uh, I've seen plenty worse. It's okay. Wouldn't say it's like best in class, but it's better than a lot. So it's okay on that part. The durable water repellent finish is not PFC free. These things do matter to me. The Patagonia one, we all know they're like um, credentials in terms of that sort of stuff. They are PFC free on their jackets. This is 50% recycled fabric. The Patagonia one is 100% recycled. They're moving in the right direction though. I believe they are going to be trying to make them 100% recycled. That's a good thing. Um, they are B Corps registered, uh, which is um, it shows they've got some credentials. They get looked at by an external um, body to, to see that sort of stuff. The, the kit is made in Vietnam, like the Patagonia stuff, and they say on their website that they sort of pay fair wages, that kind of thing, but I'm just going on what the website uh, says on that front. For every purchase, they do re-green 100 square metres of land in Africa. Again, you can look further into that, but it sounds like a good thing. Th th those things do matter to me um, when I'm buying something. If I can buy things that are a bit better in that regard, then I will. So it's been a good jacket. I will keep wearing it for ML stuff. Like I said, I've got no affiliation with the company. They've been really nice to deal with. I haven't spoken to uh, I think only one person there, but in our emails and stuff, they've been really pleasant. So like I said, there's a code below if you did want to try it. For ML stuff, I, I would recommend trying it if it fits. I think it's a good jacket. For climbing stuff, no, I'd rather buy other stuff for cli climbing work. Um, but I've been really happy with it. If you've got questions on it, feel free to fire them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer as best I can. Equally, same about the scramble. If you've got questions about the scramble and stuff, fire them in the comments below. It takes me a while, but I do get back to everyone eventually. Um, other than that though, follow us on Insta, follow us on Facebook, click the like button, smash the subscribe button, all the support, massively appreciated. I know I say it every time, I'm gonna keep doing so. As always though, massive thanks for watching. More videos coming up very soon. <laughs>